Goblin launch detected. Hey gang, using the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, will get you 10% off any order over $10 at Flipside Gaming. It'll also get you 10% off any orders of singles at Multizone. And it'll get you 10% off most products at Original Magic Art, with the exceptions of some paintings. If these fine sites don't have what you're looking for, you can also consider using my affiliate link when ordering from TCG Player. And if you'd like to join the Generic Goblin Gang to support this channel, there's a link to my Patreon in the description below. We're back, and thanks to one of my viewers, I'm able to say that it's MTG Mudsta versus Malcolm versus Max versus Martin. This game takes place at Game Breakers in Nepean, and Max is playing his Horde of Notions deck. He keeps an Opal Palace, a Seaside Citadel, Savage Lands, Risen Reef, Titania, Whisperwood Elemental, and Woodvine Elemental. Malcolm has promised to be a good boy, playing Nath, and he keeps a Timberwatch Elf, a Beast Within, Kadama's Reach, Vanquisher's Banner, Swamp, Forest, and Woodland Cemetery. Martin's got an interesting build of Golos, and I'm sure you'll figure it out as we go along. He keeps a Scroll Rack, a Maronar, Polluted Delta, Kindred Discovery, Enlightened Tutor, Scrubland, and Rack Colony. I am rocking the Duke of Dumpsters to ready, keeping two mountains, Sequestered Stash, Metalworker, Mindslaver, Ugin the Ineffable, and Mere Battlesphere. Malcolm wins the die roll and starts us off. Malcolm plays a Swamp. I play a Mountain. Martin plays a Scrubland and casts Enlightened Tutor, going to find a Soul Ring and put it on top. Max plays a Tap Seaside Citadel. Malcolm plays his Woodland Cemetery and casts Skull Clamp. I play a Mountain. Martin plays a Polluted Delta and casts his Soul Ring. He taps the Soul Ring for a Scroll Rack and passes. Max plays a Tap Savage Lands. Malcolm plays a Forest and casts Kadama's Reach. He passes while searching for a basic for the field and one for his hand. I play a Mountain and cast Metalworker. Martin activates his scroll rack and puts two aside, and draws two and puts the card set aside back on top. He then cracks his delta, losing one to find a green with it, and shortcuts, also casting Farseek to find another land as he passes to Max. Max plays an Opal Palace and casts his Risen Reef. It enters and reveals Smothering Tithe, which he puts to his hand, and he passes to Malcolm. Malcolm plays a Swamp for turn, and casts Vanquisher's Banner, which enters and he names Elf. I tap my Metalworker, revealing 5 artifacts to make 10 colorless mana. I then cast Voltaic Key, and use 1 to untap the Metalworker with the Voltaic Key, and then re-tap the Metalworker, this time revealing 4 artifacts for a total of 18 floating colorless. I then cast Ugin the Ineffable, and uptick him making a spirit and set aside a card. I then play out a Combustible Gear Hulk. I choose Malcolm with the trigger, and he decides to have me mill. I hit Anger, Sahili's Directive, and Karn's Bastion, which has the Gear Hulk dealing 7 to Malcolm. With Anger in my yard, I'm able to swing the Gear Hulk at Malcolm, doing a further 6. Martin casts his own copy of Kadama's Reach, going to find a basic for the field and for hand. He passes while searching, announcing he'll play the basic he puts to hand for his land for turn. Max plays a Wooded Foothills, and loses one to go and find a land as he sacrifices it. He grabs a Temple Garden, and takes two to have it come in untapped. He then pays two for a Fauna Shaman, and passes. Malcolm plays a Swamp, and pays three mana for Beast Within, and targets my Metalworker. The little artifact that could gets destroyed, and gives me a 3-3 Beast. He then casts an Imperious Perfect, drawing from the Banner Trigger, and then passing. I draw for turn, and cast Basalt Monolith for one colorless, thanks to Ugin. I then tap it in another mountain to bring up Papa Doretti. I uptick Ugin again, making a spirit, and exiling a card underneath it. I then uptick Doretti, discarding two, and drawing two. I play a Command Beacon, and cast Tectonic Reformation. Heading to combat, I swing the Gear Hulk and Beast at Malcolm for blowing up my Metalworker. I then pass to Martin. Martin plays an Ancient Tomb, and loses two from it to cast Kinder Discovery. As it enters, he names Rat. He then casts Misform Ultimus, who is a rat, and draws a card as it enters. 
he then passes to Max. Max activates his Fauna Shaman, pitching the Maelstrom Wanderer to go and find a creature card. He reveals an Avatar of Growth, which is a card I'm pretty fond of, and it's reduced by 3 because of how many opponents he has. He then pays the other 3 to cast it, and as it enters, Max resolves the Risen Reef trigger first. He shows a Command Tower off the top, and puts it into play. We all then go to our libraries, and find two basics for the field, and put them into play, and Max then passes. Malcolm plays a Timberwatch Elf, drawing from the banner trigger. He then plays Shaman of the Pack, who comes in, and Malcolm has me lose 3 life with its Enter the Battlefield trigger, and he also draws from the banner. Malcolm then casts a Wirewood Symbiote, and equips the Timberwatch with a Skull Clamp before passing turn. I draw for turn, and cycle a Mountain with my Tectonic Reformation. I then cycle the Tomb of the Spirit Dragon, draw another card. I then cycle my Bloodstained Mire, and I finally draw something relevant, casting a Sculpting Steel, which comes in as a copy of the Combustible Gear Hulk. I put the target for the second copy of the Gear Hulk on Malcolm again, and once more he has me milling three. I reveal Shimmermere, Alhamret's Archive, and Clock of Omen, dealing 12 more damage. I then down tick to ready, swapping the Monolith for the Archive, and then uptick Ugin once more to make a spirit token and exile a card underneath it. I then pass turn. At the end of turn, Martin activates his scroll rack and does what it does. Martin plays a Bloodstained Mire, sacrificing it and losing one to go and find a Badlands and shuffle away the cards he doesn't want. He then plays Nizuvi Grave Robber, drawing from the Kindred Discovery as it enters. He then takes two from the Ancient Tomb, as he taps more mana for a Maronar, drawing again from the Kindred Discovery. Moving to combat, the Misform goes at max, which triggers the Discovery again, and draws Martin another card. Misform then connects, and Max takes three. In his post-combat main phase, Martin then brings out Golos, and goes to find the card the whole deck is inspired by, Swarmyard. He then passes turn. Max draws, and activates Fauna Shaman, discarding a creature to go and find an Ingot Chewer. He then casts a Panharmonicon, and evokes the Chewer. This triggers the Risen Reef twice as it enters, putting two cards to his hand as neither are lands, and Max gets to blow up two artifacts. He hits my Archive, and the original Combustible Gear Hulk. Max then passes. Malcolm decides to save some time on his turn, casting an Explosive Vegetation, and then a Green Sun Zenith where X is 3. He finds two basics, and an Elvish Arch Druid, and passes to me. I draw, and down tick to ready, sacrificing the Sculpting Steel version of the Gear Hulk for the Archive again. I then cycle Sequestered Stash thanks to the Tectonic Reformation, drawing two because of the Archive. I then cast Commander Sphere, and down tick Ugin to blow up Max's Fauna Shaman, and I pass to Martin. Martin activates and uses his scroll rack on his upkeep, and draws for turn. He then plays a Command Tower, and activates Skolos' ability, exiling his top three cards, which he can cast this turn for free. He casts Conspiracy, which as it comes in, has Martin naming Rat for it. He then plays a Dragon Lair Spider, which is a rat now, and then draws from it as it enters because of the Kindred Discovery, and he finishes up by playing an Anointed Procession. Martin then loses two life to Ancient Tomb, and taps some blue to cast a Clever Impersonator, which comes in as a copy of the Anointed Procession. He then activates Maronar, and sacrifices the Nizumi Grave Robber. Martin gets to put into play four rat tokens, which is then doubled by the first Anointed Procession, and then doubled again for a total of 16 rat tokens, who also each draw a card as they enter. He then casts a Rat Colony, who draws him a card as it enters, and I should mention, it has a casual 22 power for only 2 mana, putting even Tarmogoyf to shame in terms of power versus mana investment. Moving to combat, Martin swings the Misform again at max, drawing as he attacks, and then dealing 3. He then passes, discarding down to 7. Max casts a Cavalier Flame in his main phase, resolving his 2 Risen Reef triggers first. He hits 1 land, putting it into play, and a non-land card, drawing it. He then has his two Cavalier triggers, discarding six and drawing six, and then deciding to do it again, discarding another six and drawing another six. Max then plays a Forest. At this point, 
Martin is done discarding and realizes he should be getting 4 rat tokens from the spider trigger for Max casting a spell. He also gets to draw 4 more cards as they enter thanks to the Kindred Discovery. Max then casts Alter Dementia, which gives Martin another 4 rat tokens and draws him another 4 cards. Max then evokes Spite Bellows, who comes in, and Martin gains another 4 tokens and another 4 cards. Max resolves his 2 Risen Reef triggers first, hitting a Breeding Pool and a non-land card that goes to his hand, and he then sacrifices the Bellows to the Altar to mill Martin for 6. The Spite Bellower trigger also takes out Golos with the damage, and Max then passes. Malcolm draws and pays 2 for a Blood Artist. This has Martin's Dragon Lair Spider trigger, making him 4 more Rat Insect tokens, and he's forced to draw 4 more cards because Discovery isn't a May ability. Malcolm then plays Mind Slash, making Martin gain another 4 Insect Rat tokens and draws another 4 cards. Malcolm then sacrifices the Timberwatch Elf to the Mind Slash, and he targets me to pick a card and discard it from my hand. He makes me pitch my Mind Slaver. With the Elf dying, Malcolm also gains 1 life from the Blood Artist, draining me for 1, and he draws 2 from the Skull Clam trigger. Malcolm then casts Siphon Mind, making Martin 4 more Insect Rat tokens and drawing him 4 more cards. We all then discard a card, and Malcolm draws 3. Malcolm then floats 3 green mana with the Archdruid and casts an Elvish Harbinger. This gives Martin another 4 Insect Rat tokens and draws him another 4, which at this point leaves him with probably less than 20 cards in his library. Malcolm then goes to find an Elf card and puts it on top. He reveals a Null Mage Shepherd, putting it on top. Malcolm then plays a Forest and returns the Harbinger to his hand with the Wirewood Sibiot and tapping his Elvish Arch Druid. He then retaps the Arch Druid for a chunk of mana and uses it to cast Hall of Gemstones. Martin gains another 4 Insect Rat tokens and draws another 4 as Malcolm passes. I pick red for my Hall of Gemstones trigger and draw for turn. I then make one red with the Commander Sphere and sacrifice it to its second ability, drawing a card, which gives me two because of my archive. I then put to stack Scrap Mastery. This makes Martin 4 more insect tokens and draws him 4 more cards, and Max considers trying to mill Martin out, but luckily Martin still has enough cards. Scrap Mastery then resolves, and we swap the artifacts that are in the field for the ones in our yards. Martin gets a Vanquisher's Banner, which he names Rat for as it comes in. My Spine of Ish Saw enters, blowing up the Hall of Gemstones, and I then get to activate Metalworker because Anger is still in my yard, revealing two artifacts for four mana. I cast a Krark Clan Ironworks, getting Martin four more insect tokens and four more draws. I then sacrifice the Spine of Ishsa and the Sculpting Steel, which by the way had come in as nothing because everything entered at the same time, to make me enough mana to use the Mind Slaver and take Martin's next turn. I should note the Spine also goes back to my hand as it hits the yard. Max then nicely reminds me to resolve my Gear Hulk trigger, and I target Malcolm, who lets me draw 3 this time. I then uptick to ready, discarding 2, and drawing 2, and then downtick Ugin, blowing up the Kindred Discovery, and passing to Martin slash myself's next turn. At this point, Martin and I have more than enough rats to more or less take out Malcolm and Max, but Max is playing it cool, as though he's got some spicy answer. I think Force of Vigor or something would be a pretty big blowout, as it would remove fear from most of my tokens, but I move forward with my plan, losing 2 and tapping a white for Mirror Entity. I then draw from the Vanquisher Banner trigger and go to combat. I swing enough at Malcolm and Max to take them out, and Max reveals his poker face is just that, and I was able to call his bluff. Moving to Martin's second main phase, I know I have to finish him off or the crack pack is going to take me out. Thankfully Martin's drawn a zillion cards by this point, and I'm able to cast a Rat Colony, drawing from the banner. I then cast another one, drawing again, and a third, drawing another one. This is unfortunately all of the Rat Colonies he has, but the coup de grace is that I'm able to cast a Shapesharer, who on cast still makes Martin draw a card he can't, and he loses the game. Game review time. So I had a pretty explosive start with Doretti the Duke of Dumpsters, thanks to the Metal Worker and basically a billion artifacts in my hand. I could have probably been a lot more aggressive with my cards, but I really didn't want to pull out too far ahead and become the arch enemy of the game. 
Speaking of pulling ahead, as soon as Martin resolved that conspiracy, things got pretty nutty for his deck. And with the resolution of the Dragon Lair Spider, he was almost completely out of control as to how many cards he was going to draw before his next turn. There was a lot of discussion going around as to whether or not he'd draw out, and I think if Max and Malcolm had cast a few more cards, Max's plan of milling Martin out with the Altar of Dementia might have actually been able to happen. I think in any other circumstances, Max's elemental deck was in a great position, and even with the self-wheels from his Cavalier of Flames, he was setting himself up for a really strong turn involving Living Death. Unfortunately, just like with Malcolm, a good hand in this game unfortunately didn't get you very far when your opponent was making 4 tokens and drawing 4 cards every time you cast a spell. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mtgmudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.